Hey, Nicole here. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you exactly how I pull off the glam black and white photo booth experience with my salsa photo booth. Let's go. There are a couple really crucial elements to pulling this off well. I'm gonna be sharing with you some creators that I think are doing it super well with their iPad-based photo booth, the salsa photo booth, um, in the description below. So please go check out their Instagram accounts. They've been incredibly helpful in um, answering my questions as I was trying to figure out when I was starting and they really provided a lot of inspiration for me um, as I started to use it in my company with my photo booth business. Um, but I would say one of the first things that you need obviously is you need a all white backdrop. I got mine from PB Backdrops. I have it linked. I have the direct link down below in the description for you so you can click on that and use that one. This is one of those backdrops that go over the frame and then you zip at the bottom so it's really nice and tight. There's no creases or wrinkles or anything like that. It's a really nice flat white backdrop. If you haven't heard me talk about it before, um, you need to just make sure whenever you order your backdrops that you're ordering it for the correct size. If you do order it from PB Backdrops and you have the Atlas backdrop from Photo Booth Supply Co, you need to make sure that you upgrade your backdrop to an eight by eight. Um, and then you'll use the extenders provided for the Atlas to make it that size. If you need more insight into the why and what of that, um, there, I have a video that I explain all of it and go through it in detail. Um, I'll link that below. The next thing, and um, I'll, I'll kind of, on, I'll do a split screen here and I'll kind of show you me setting up a glam photo booth for a wedding I did recently. Um, but you'll see I put something on the back of my white backdrop and what that is, is a blackout curtain. And you'll see in the setting behind me, there's a window. And so it was essential for me in, to not have any light coming in from the bag since it is white on both sides. Um, I needed to make sure I have a complete blackout so that there's no way any light can come through and kind of ruin the experience of having that all white backdrop. Um, so I put the blackout curtain behind it. Honestly, I'm probably gonna use it every single time I do my glam because I think it makes a big difference with um, when you start to mess with the exposure and the settings of the um, iPad. And I'll go into that more later, but I'm kind of experimenting to see if having that solid white, like almost vinyl backdrop helps to reflect light better um, versus the cloth. And so I think I'm right um, in that path. But if you've ever done that experiment, let me know. I would love to know. Um, but I do think it makes a difference. I haven't experimented with it just yet and done like a before and after, but hopefully when I have some time, I'll be able to do that and show you guys if it makes a difference. But it's something to consider and something to kind of play around with. Um, it might better the experience, but I don't know. So you've got your backdrop, you've got your blackout curtain. The next most important thing is going to be adjusting the manual settings of exposure at your event. This is difficult to do before the event, uh, also not best practice because every event is going to have different kinds of lighting. And so adjusting your temperature and adjusting your exposure um, in your Salsa app are going to be super essential in pulling off this look. Um, temperature doesn't super matter, um, but it's going to mostly be turning off the auto um, exposure adjustment and um, adjusting it manually. And so I'll share with you now a screen recording of the settings so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. If you're unaware, ISO is the camera's sensitivity to light. A lower ISO means less sensitivity to light and a higher ISO means more sensitivity. As far as exposure time, you're gonna wanna put that at one over 60. Um, I kind of keep it there for every single event. Um, and then I adjust the ISO to the lighting and needs of the event venue space. When I've done glam, however, you'll see me here um, and I'll do split screen again and show you here me messing around with it. Um, I spent a significant amount of time um, adjusting the settings, trying to get that perfect look. And the look that I want is no shadows. I want the subject and then a completely white backdrop with no shadows. There's a lot of elements involved with that, but it's going to incorporate really great lighting from above the salsa, from the salsa, 
and then also from um, next to on either side of your backdrop. Charge more for this service because there's a lot of additional lighting that you need to really, really get this right. And it does take quite a bit of time to get the um, settings right on your camera. It's very involved. Um, and so just make sure you're when you're offering this to your clients that it is an upcharge because it does take more time and more skill. Okay, so here I am on, um, on the iPad and you'll see that, um, and the way that you access this is by going to your camera settings on the left hand side and then clicking on that exposure button. I'm sorry, this is shaky guys, I'm just holding my iPad. Um, but I'm going to set my exposure time to 1 over 60. Let me show you what changing that um, a little higher does. Makes it a little bit darker. And completely back. <laughs> so what we want to do is let's keep it over at 1 over 60. And then we're going to adjust our ISO. So here I have the ISO pretty low. Um, and what I do at my event is I want to kind of overexpose myself just a little bit, but you'll see as I adjust the ISO, the clarity kind of gets worse. And so the closer you get to zero, the more detail you see in my face here. Um, and so that's going to be important when you're setting up your glam as well is to um, mess with this slider until you get that look that you want to achieve. For this particular glam at this wedding, I did have to adjust the settings as the night progressed because the event started towards sunset and went into the evening when it got obviously much darker. Oh, you'll see for when I was uh, kind of up close to the camera, I was a little bit overexposed, but what that allowed for was my backdrop to be solid white and eliminate any kind of gray, any kind of um, darker, not white <laughs> background. Um, and so I truly believe like to get that perfect glam look, you're going to have to do manual settings and really kind of play with it and adjust the exposure to get that really crisp, clean look. Another big part of pulling off the glam black and white look is going to be lighting. Lighting is absolutely crucial and essential for getting that best, best look. Additional lighting smooths out your skin. It reduces shadowing. It really just makes everything look better. And I can promise you when your guests are in the photo booth and they leave and get their photo, they're going to be really impressed with what you're able to pull off even with a um, an iPad photo booth. Um, you're, you're really able to produce a really, really great photo and memory that they'll, they'll be able to cherish. So there's a couple of options. When I first started doing glam, I had a large ring light that I just set up above my salsa booth, a little bit slanted down, and that provided like overhead headlight so that was able to light up my subjects really well and then a little bit of the background of course when you have a lot of front for forward facing light you're going to have a shadow and so the way to combat that is with exposure settings but also with I have two additional wand lights that are either side of my photo booth that I position almost at like 45 degree angles to light up my backdrop and so it's a lot of lighting it's a lot of work but it is absolutely worth it to get the results that you want. Um, as a recap, the essentials that you're going to need for a black and white glam photo booth experience with the Salsa photo booth are going to be a white backdrop. I would say a blackout curtain is essential, but you can get away with not having one. Um, I recommend it though, so if you can get it, get it. If you can't, it's okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to recommend is upgrade your lighting. I've linked all of my lighting options below. I've linked the ring light. I also now have um, a full like studio umbrella light that I have um, that I use that I really, really love. Um, and I'll link that below. Two last tips for getting that really gorgeous glam look. It's going to be using the mono filter. That's really going to be the best one to use for black and white. Um, but you can always play around and see if you like the mono or the nor filter. The other one is going to be the glam settings within the Salsa app. So the Salsa has the ability to add a glam filter, which softens, brightens, smooths, does all the little fancy magic. Um, definitely play around with that feature. There have been some issues with it, only applying to one face at a time. Um, so if you're doing like large groups of people, it's probably not ideal. It's not going to work on everybody. 
Um, so best probably to turn that off. However, if you're having one to two people, you can turn it on and just mess with how, how much smoothing, how much brightening you want to have on there. I tend to go towards like the softer end, so not too much at all. Um, only a little bit of brightening, a little bit of the smoothing. Uh, I want it to look as natural as possible and just as flattering as possible as well. So toggle with that, play with that, um, experiment with it, kind of get a feel for the best look that you wanna produce for your clients. And the very last one that I think is super essential to pulling off a really great glam experience is getting your clients as close to the photo booth as possible. And I'm talking like the photo is chest up. And this is because you are working with a iPad. To get the very best quality, you're gonna need to get up close. That means two to three people, you know, maybe four if you can squeeze them in into the photo booth at a time. That's ideal for sure. You can always stretch that and have them further back. To get that look that has become so popularized, it's gonna need to be like close and personal. Um, if you look even at the Mirror Mirror, which was the originator and the original Kardashian glam black and white look, um, the look they produced, it's all very up, up close and personal. It's chest up, um, focuses on the face. So um, that's something to consider and keep in mind is when you place your guests or when you sit, set up your photo booth, how far are you going to be from your backdrop? Are you gonna have your guests um, closer to the booth? Um, you can also consider putting tape on the floor, telling them to stand in a specific spot. All in all, you absolutely can produce a really high quality photo. Uh, it just takes some time, preparation, and practice. I hope that helped. I hope this has been insightful for you. If you have any additional questions, please put them down below in the comments. Um, visit our Instagram account, Own Your Moment Co. Um, it's our community for photo booth owners just like you. And if you want to be a part of our exclusive Facebook group where you can ask even more detailed questions, uh, our motto is no question is a stupid question. No question is a dumb question. We want to answer all your questions. Um, you can find that down there as well. There's a lot of links in the description today, but it's all gonna be worth it. So thank you so much and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.